Hey everybody. So I want to talk very briefly around what I've got going on right now, and that is I've connected up the Octo Everywhere plugin. Uh, first I'll talk through why I picked the Octo Everywhere plugin, what problem I'm trying to solve with it, and then some of the specifics around getting it set up and my experience with it. So let's get started. Um, but we, in, in order to describe what Octo Everywhere even is, we have to come all the way back to the beginning, which is the question. I would like to be able to see, manage, check up on, interact with my 3D printer. I'm using the Anycubic Viper. I would like to be able to interact with that from anywhere, over the internet, outside of my home, as if I were sitting in my house. Okay, through OctoPrint or OctoPi. Okay, so what's, <laughs> let, I guess let's start. What's the equipment you need? First, you need an internet connection, you need a 3D printer, you need a uh, Raspberry Pi running OctoPi OctoPrint, you need an Octo Everywhere account, which is free, and you need a smartphone or a laptop. Let's say you could also do this through a laptop. Okay, well, if you have all of that, and something to print. Okay, so once you have all that together, let's rewind and talk about what the experience is at the start and how it's different outside of the home. Here's your house in this sort of little gray area here, and when you've got your 3D printer, you can start with just using the SD card. You take a print, you copy it to the SD card, stick it in the printer, and off you print. Okay, that's one experience. If you then connect a Raspberry Pi and install OctoPi, OctoPrint, onto it, and you connect the two, you can now manage this from anywhere in your home with the OctoPrint server. <coughs> what capabilities does that get you? That gets you the capability of being able to see, manage, check in on your printer if it's in, for for example, my printer is in the basement, uh, so without having to run up and down the stairs, I can I can check in on that. Now there's other ways to solve that problem. You can just put a camera there and a webcam or something and just look in on it. But if you want to interact with your printer, you need an OctoPrint setup. Okay, so now you have the the ability to interact with your printer. You can install plugins to even take screenshots and time lapses and send notifications out. You can manipulate certain aspects of the print as, as far as what pieces of the print you're printing or not, these kinds of things. There's all kinds of uh, you know, error detection plugins and all kinds of things you can, you can install once you have this capability. So it, it really adds quite a bit of functionality to just plopping a, some G-code on an SD card, hitting print, and checking in on it in some sort of manual way. Okay, now, all of that is all happening in your home, and that's great. And you can check in on your OctoPrint or OctoPi by way of mobile device, be it a desktop, laptop, tablet, smartphone. All of that's all happening in your home. Great. Why? Because you're all on the same wireless network. So the OctoPi can talk to all of your devices in the house because you're all on the same network. The Octo server is physically connected to your printer and everybody's happy. You're talking to this, this is talking to this, and this is the connection that's happening, but it's all in your home. Great. Okay, so if you want to take your device, we'll say smartphone, laptop, something outside of the home, and check in on the print, or even start one from scratch, or cancel it, or modify it, or what have you. You need something to facilitate this conversation. You could go straight from your smartphone to the old good old internet right into your house. Do you want to do that? That You absolutely do not want to do that. That's bad, because if you could do that, somebody else could do that, and that's not good. Uh, now, you could probably set up some levels of security so that that's modestly secure, but still, you're opening the possibility for this to happen, whereas right now, it's not an option. Great. 
Okay, so what do, you, what do you do now? You need somebody, this is where Octo Everywhere comes in, you need somebody who's facilitating that connection, that conversation for you. So what do you do? You install the Octo Everywhere plugin on your Octo print server. You set up an account with Octo Everywhere. It's super easy. They say two minutes. It's That's an exaggeration. It might be a minute, maybe, if you're taking your time. It's really easy. But on the plugin, sign up for an account. I even added multi-factor authentication, which is, I think, essential. And now what you have is this layout where Octo Everywhere, which has some geographically dispersed servers running in the cloud, your Octo Print server makes a connection. Octo Everywhere, it's a persistent connection, as long as your printer is on, of course, talking to one another. And then you can come in with your other device, log into your Octo Everywhere account, say, hey, I want to check in on my print. Octo Everywhere says, sure, I'm going to authenticate you. Uh, I believe it's using AES-256. I know it's 256-bit encryption as articulated in the security blog that was posted, and I'll show that in a second. But uh, So there's 256-bit encryption. This is assuming uh, you're using HTTPS. HTTPS is the same thing you use to talk to most other websites, and it's the S stands for security. Okay, this is a nice encrypted communication. Encrypted means if you're out here on the good old internet, can't come spying in on this and just reading the information because it's encrypted. A nice private communication. Someone trying to come in here can't read it. So if anybody else happens to be trying to sniff, sniff is a, a industry term for sort of monitor, read, capture, and look at this traffic. If someone's trying to look at this traffic, they are unable to because it is encrypted. Come in here by HTTPS over a browser, or if you're using an app, that's facilitated also by Secure Connection. You come in here, you talk to the Octo Everywhere server services, it facilitates this communication back to your Octopi. This account is also, you can use multi-factor authentication. That's a whole separate conversation about what it is and why it's great, but you should definitely do that. Not only do you have to still authenticate to your Octo Everywhere account, are you using HTTPS, but you also still have to log into your Octopi server, or the credential you have there too. In order to interact with that, you have to log in here with the account you've set up with Octo Everywhere. And then, even if you say connect, there's another layer of authent authentication where you have to log in to your Octo print server as if you were sitting at home, your top desktop, tablet, smartphone, whatever. So this is ultra slick. If you're using iOS, I recommend the mobile app called Polymer. Connects quite easily to Octo Everywhere. There's a little button that says, go to Octo Everywhere. You press it. It's almost like magic. It's ultra simple. This is relatively straightforward for everyone. I think this is very approachable setup. I believe it is secure. Uh, I'm actually running some vulnerability assessment tools against my own printer now that it's connected and talking to the internet. Uh, I'm running some uh, port sweeps with a tool called Nessus against my printer to see what those results are. So I'll, I'll update once that test is done. So let's take another look. Here's the here's the uh, what the interface looks like once you sign up for a free account. You can see my printer is just sitting here. If you click this connect button, what this does is really open a session to your Octo print server, which looks like this and you can see it. it. All it does is gives you the same login box that you would have. You log in, here it is, it passes that credential, it burns that credential from their servers. So this is their blog on security. If you want to read Quinn's blog on security, read up further on that. I'll stick some of these links in the post so that you can you can get right to this. But um, you know, nothing is saved, nothing is stored. It's 256-bit uh, randomness, everything is HTTPS. Um, there's a high focus on security here. 
so you can sort of read up on some of that. And and I, I did actually follow up with Quinn to understand if this is a persistent connection. It is a persistent connection. Of course, your Octo print server has to be powered on and, and talking to. Uh, the plugin has to be on and, and plugging back to this. If you turn this off, the nice thing is if you're really concerned about security, you just shut down your Octo print server and none of this traffic is available to come in anyway. It's one other avenue of uh, security. When you're not using all of this, you probably should just shut it off. That's for pretty much everything in your house. I am a proponent of security for Internet of Things and all these Internet connected devices, and I'm a strong believer if you're not using them, you should just turn them off. This is my local view. You can see um, I'm logged into my, my local IP. This is my so everywhere view, they are identical. There's, there's no difference. You're just having a remote session, uh, webhook session to this same view. And the plugin is facilitating that conversation. If you were on your smartphone, like I said, uh, there are a few apps endorsed by the Octo Everywhere folks. You'll want to grab one of those. iOS, I have used the Polymer app. And the free functionality seems to work quite nicely. So endorsed apps for Android, the endorsed apps for iOS. Picked Octo Everywhere because they seem to understand security in the way that I think security should be understood. I like the idea of MFA on your account. I like the idea of encrypted communication between all devices. And at the end of the day, if you're really paranoid like I am, just shut your Octo print server down, or shut your OctoPi off to be safe. I also piggyback on Google credentials and other things. This, I feel, is a home run as far as the functionality that people are looking to get and the ease and the security. I think this is the trifecta of all three and uh, seems pretty solid. Now, of course, do your own research. Don't take my word for it. If you get hacked, I'm not responsible. All the normal disclaimers. But my, my vulnerability assessment tests are still running against my own server here. So, everybody... I thought I would share with you the results of my network vulnerability assessment of the Octo Everywhere node that I'm running. I took my own URL and ran some comprehensive vulnerability assessment checks against it. I won't expand these because I intend to share this report with the folks at Octo Everywhere, but it's important to note that there are only 24 informational no lows, no mediums, no highs, no criticals. That's pretty strong as far as what you would find even out in the wild if you were to run these tests against professional enterprise grade types of services. So the only concern with information is information can be used to advance your attack and walk up this vulnerability stack and try to exploit something. But that's really the only danger. A couple of these in here are probably could use a look at, but but the most part this is a pretty strong sweep of the service and the platform. And overall, I would say I'm very pleased with this from a security and vulnerability assessment test. So anyway, kudos to the folks over at Octo Everywhere. They've got stuff pretty well locked down. Uh, like I said, I'm going to share this report with them just for kicks. Uh, and if they want to tighten this up even further, that's but I hope that helps cover all the questions you might have about the different technical aspects and the security aspects of getting the Octo print server connected with Octo everywhere. In my next video, I'll show how to set it up, get everything connected. It's really quite easy and get started with the print. Thanks for watching.